morning. Hello all you awakening wonders out there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Chrissy and if you're wanting to find out what's happening in the around the world, you've tapped on the right place. It means you're starting to wake up to all the garbage that you're being fed. Don't forget to subscribe and hit those like buttons guys and comment down below. You know I love hearing from you. So I'll get started and we'll see what comes up. Oh, it's showing me these global leaders, and I guess we could say it's mostly the WEF people. They're showing me a map of the world, and they're building their bridges. So all the lines are drawing from country to country to country to country to country. If you think of like a map <laughs> like that, they're really um, connecting now. So we know all these global leaders, especially with the Queen dying yesterday. We all know here that Charles is a pretty much connected to the WEF and Klaus Schwab. Yes, I posted something on my Facebook yesterday, and of course, oh, it got fact-checked by the independent fact-checkers and was told it was misinformation that Charles isn't connected to Klaus Schwab, apparently. Oh my God, so we know now they're really fact-checking anything to do with Charles and connecting him to the WEF. We know they're fact-checking because they blanked it out on my Facebook feed. So just be warned what you're sharing because they're really checking now, really, especially around Charles with obviously what's just gone down. Um, so I'm definitely getting their, their joining now. They're really, I guess you could say, <laughs> joining forces. Um, they're showing me the lines going from this country to that country to this country to that country, and we know they are. This means they're really opening up this is the reset global leaders they're really opening up their lines of communication now and they're really going to start working together moving forward um oh, so frustrating i've been talking this week about the them pushing the dirt over people with their bulldozer meaning implementing their agenda um i'll just see where else we go hang on a tick <clears throat> And it's showing me like on this global map, like they've got lines going from this country to that country, to this country, say to Canada, to Australia, to Australia, to New Zealand. Um, but they're also got on the major cities, these big red dots. They're showing me these big red dots. And I would say these would be the mapped out smart cities. So they're really looking now at pushing the renewables around the smart cities. We already know that here. I did share a video on my Prime Minister, current Prime Minister, the new one, Anthony Albanese. I'll call him Elbow, if anybody <laughs> wants to know, because he just drives me crazy. But I've got a video I posted of him from 11 years ago, yes, talking about his smart rails, like speed rails, all up the east coast of Australia. Exactly what we've been talking about for ages. All these things just seem to pop up, don't they? Um, so he's been talking about that for quite a while now, but now I'm getting these red dots are being put onto their, their big smart city rollout. So I am feeling like they're really honing in now and they're putting their red, it's like a red sticker, they're putting on their plan, um, they're mapping out where all these smart cities are going to go. Oh, they're so sure of themselves, aren't they? It makes me sick. Oh, oh, let's put one here and one there. Oh my God. Oh, have they asked the people? No, as usual. Um, hang on, let's see where else we go today. And it is, it's like showing me all of them at this big boardroom table and they're all standing over it looking at this map. I don't know if they literally are, they could be, they could be having meetings, we would never know. Do They never keep us in the loop. Um, but they're all, oh, there's a bird looking at me from the window. Um, there's a, um, a big boardroom table and they're all standing around. You know when someone's standing around, they're all leaning on the table and they're all looking at the map and they're all having their input now. So this is the global leaders, the reset leaders. They're all having their like input. It's like they're coming together again um, to make sure their plan goes smoother because they've had a lot of hiccups. That's what I keep saying to you. These things haven't just rolled out to perfection and rolled out smoothly at all. Um, they really haven't. So they've got to try and get this right now. Um, <clears throat> hang on, let me see what else we get. <laughs> They're kind of, it's saying to me like around the meat industry in these kind of renewable areas that the bug thing hasn't been received very well. <laughs> oh, and we know why. Oh, they're probably a bit too crunchy for people to cope with when they're eating. 
but they're, they're um, looking at other ways that they can introduce <laughs> oh my god they're saying the guides are saying these species oh my god but meaning the ways they can introduce um, the new foods moving forward oh it's just the strangest thing isn't it God, you wonder what's even going on, don't you? I scratch my head all the time and go, what the hell is happening here? So they're realising that um, <laughs> subliminally people can't cope with the thought of eating bugs and crickets and things like that. So they're going to have to um, look at a way around that, that they can introduce them in a more sort of positive way. How do you introduce that in a more positive way? Oh, my God. So they're looking at ways that they can, yes, bring it in in a softer sort of... Um, they're gonna, I think they, what they're gonna be doing is, is focusing more on the proteins. Um, wasn't there something about cockroach milk had more nutrition in it than cow's milk or something like that recently that they had done a study on? Um, so this is what they're gonna be doing. They're gonna be saying, you're gonna get much more protein. It's much healthier for you if you really look at the highest protein sort of <laughs> creatures and critters. Oh my God, this world's gone completely mad. So I don't. I still don't think people are going to be receptive to it. All the trickery, see the smoke and mirrors. So they're going to be looking at the more, um, the protein side. <laughs> For the people on diets, it's probably good. I'm guessing they're lowering carbs. Oh my God, it's just an idiotic world, isn't it? If anyone watches Carl Vernon now, there, he's so funny. He just nails everything. Some of his videos, you've got to go and watch them because they're that funny. Um, he talks a lot about these things. Um, so that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to reintroduce that, but using a different format. Um, hang on, let's see where else we go. I'm still getting France, Belgium, Munich. There's a lot of rising. People are really rising up in these areas. Um, when I mention those areas, they just come to the fore. They just dominate my thoughts. Um, because people are taking action. People are taking action. Look, we know we're never going to see it on mainstream media and they're going to try and hide as much as they can. Look at the fact-checking with Charles and the WEF connections and everything. They're blanking it all out. It's like they've thrown the big... I often talk about them throwing the tablecloth over everything or the blanket and hiding everything from view. Um, well, that's what they're doing now. <laughs> they are and they're not going to let us see all these protests and that's going to be sheer luck if it pops up on our youtube feeds or if we're you know maybe following other people or other platforms rather um so i'm definitely getting that there are a lot of people rising their numbers are really increasing um hang on a sec <clears throat> and i do get germany i'm still getting germany 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 has withstood a lot over time um, they've had a lot of like harsh criticism and, and it's funny isn't it like as much as we've all moved on um, a lot of people still harbor a lot of resentment to towards the German people and this is underlying this isn't just um, I don't mean in the modern society but these are very very deep issues that people who might have lost um, people in the camps the um, concentration camps and things like that um, so they're very deep emotional wounds that seem to um, pass through but now I'm getting that the actual citizens of Germany want to stand up to these dictators and tyrants they really do I'm getting Germany a lot um, because if you think about it when you think of Germany a lot of us um, as much as it's a it's a great fun place like I'm not bagging out Germany um, you know, they have the Oktoberfest, there's a lot of joy, there's a lot of great things they bring to um, the world. With, I mean, we even have Oktoberfest here in Australia. I'm sure you guys do too, wherever you're living. But um, this is what I'm saying. These people feel like they have to stand up now and fight to get their country back um, <clears throat> because they don't want to be seen as what their past was anymore. Um, I'm hoping that makes sense to what I'm saying they feel like a lot of eyes were on them way back then because it was so horrific that it did put a spotlight on Germany for a very long time and it took them a long time to heal and get through the emotional trauma of that and can you imagine if you were even for example just a citizen a normal everyday person living in Germany you had a half a clue about I'm sure they did about the Jews and things like that I'm not going too deeply into this so don't attack me for stuff but what I'm saying is 
they probably didn't have a clue of the enormity of what was going on behind the scenes, behind the fences um, and the cruelty and the inhumanity um, of what was actually going on. So they feel they have to stand up now because they don't want to go down that road again. Um, so I really get Germany's going to have big fight backs um, because you're dealing with a modern day society. You are. You're dealing with a modern day society that thinks very differently. Um, oh, and they don't want that to become part of their society again. They don't want it. That's why I keep getting Germany. Um, let's see where else we go with this today. <clears throat> I'm getting England, of course, as we knew I would. Um, I'm getting England is, uh, it's showing me, it's showing me like strangely, like a little, I know that the queen was big into corgis, but it's showing me this little scruffy like terrier thing. I guess it's relating to the dog thing. But you know how when you grab cats behind their neck it immobilizes them and i guess you could probably do that with little dogs as well like corgis or little scruffy terriers um and it's showing me that people in england are almost being held by the scruff of their neck they're immobilized um not all of you out there because i know there's a lot of you that are awake but a lot of people in england are going to be temporarily immobilized for the next obviously few weeks i know that you guys get a lot of holiday over there now because of what's happened with the queen uh, because there's a lot of people coming together and and they're showing their respects and that's totally understandable but I do feel like you've been put on hold and that could be hold with the reset as well um, but that's what I'm getting thinking it's like you've been immobilized at the moment um, because obviously and you would think you're not going to fight back um, when the Queen's just died and everybody's grieving. And like I said, it was like a family member for a lot of you people over there in the UK and all that. So I feel like you've been temporarily immobilized, meaning that someone's grabbed you by the scruff of the neck like a cat and you can't sort of move. So you can't, you know, people who are wanting to stand up and fight back against the reset or anything like that, it's not going to happen. You're, you're, it's like you're sort of a little bit frozen in time at the moment um, until a little bit down the track so you're being a little bit immobilized and it's not through any fault of your own it's just that um everything's come to a little bit of a standstill i guess you could say as well because that's just respect really you're not going to have uprisings and you know big people marching down the street about freedom and all that when you've got a whole sort of nation grieving um, so you have been put on hold and it's like that immobilized at the moment. Oh, probably not you if you're my channel because we're fairly removed from all of this anyway. Um, so if you are living over there, I know Louise, you're in Wales. There's a lot of you guys that live over there and, and you will feel that energy. But then it'll take off again. You'll feel it take off again. And um, yeah, so you've got a lot happening at the moment. But it, but it is kind of at this standstill. Um Hang on, I'll just see where else we go. Oh, I keep getting Australia. I don't often get Australia, do I? Australia is rising and, and I feel it's going to be quite public. Um, I've been saying that Australia's been rising here for quite a few weeks now. We've had people striking and, and striking is a form of protesting. I keep saying that. The guides have told us striking is like being at the bowling alley and when you get a strike, it's like the government leaders as skittles and it knocks the people or the government leaders rather over so by striking it has a big impact on fighting back against the global agenda and the reset rollout um so i'm getting that in australia and these are going to continue to be very visible um in a lot of areas gosh i keep telling you we've had daycare garbage trucks train strikes nearly every week buses nurses ambulance you name it everyone in australia strikes so I feel like there's still going to be a lot more of this heading towards Christmas. Um, definitely a lot more strikes. Um, because this is all, we've got to remember, this is all hurting people at their hip pocket because it, it, it's the cost of living going up. And this is globally too. The cost of living's going up, but the wages aren't rising to match, which we all know why, because they don't want us to. <laughs> 
make it through all this nonsense. Um, so I'm getting that for Australia. There's going to be continue to be more strikes. For some reason, Australia is getting a lot of strikes. I know a lot of you guys haven't really mentioned strikes. Oh, I think you've had postal strikes, haven't you? But for some reason, Australia, and I do always talk about how Australia and Canada were a bit on the guinea pig side for all this rollout and reset agenda, um, to be honest. So maybe that's what people are starting to sense something isn't right. And that's good. We need them to strike, protest, do whatever they want to do. Um, it's it's not our battles anymore to um, to fight, is it? Um, let me see where, if, where else we go. Now I'm getting something big is coming in October. Um, <clears throat> and it's showing me, um, it's showing me like, mm, it's showing me a children's playpen. If you think of those old fashioned children's playpens that were like a little jail cell, <laughs> that's what they remind me of. They were often wooden and our parents always had them and you'd, you'd just put your toys and your kid in there and they'd play and you knew where they were. It was safe if you had to go and hang washing out or um, you're cooking dinner or something like that. You'd chuck your kid in your playpen. Well, they have little mini playpens still, but that's what they're showing me. It's like people have been contained um, for too long and, oh, oh God. And it's it's saying that these, this is the people waking up that they're actually gonna break free of the children's playpen. So they're inside it. This is the image that the guides are giving me. We're not inside it. The guides are saying that we were so skilled <laughs> at, waking, at waking up that we managed to pile the toys up and we climbed up and over the playpen and we escaped and took off and went into our room or wherever our safe place was. Um, so we escaped this children's playpen a long time ago, but now these other people are starting to figure all this out and they're shaking the playpen and it's showing me it sort of collapsing and dropping to the ground and they're able to get out so this is positive this is the people waking up they're finding ways out of their i guess you could say trap <laughs> oh that sounds terrible put your kid in a trap but they're finding the ways out of this trap now and they're breaking free of it meaning they're shaking things and they're collapsing and that's great that's what we need these people waking up to do but that's what they're doing um, we escaped the playpen, the children's playpen long ago because we're the <laughs> Houdini escapees who, um, who know how to escape these things because we process things very differently and we can piece things together to work things out. So we worked out if you pile the toys up, we can climb over and just take off and we did. So now these people are having to like shake the, the, <laughs> the I don't know what you call it, the gates of this little playpen and, and it's collapsing and um, they're starting to walk away now. And that's great. We want to hear that these people waking up are starting to walk away from the narrative. I mean, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay stuck in it? Like, really? It's not sounding like a great future, is it? And they don't even know the half of the things that we know, do they? So imagine, oh, imagine how angry they are. Oh, the fight backs are coming. So I do feel that's happening in October. Um, people are going to be shaking that playpen and they're really going to be causing it to collapse and get out. Oh. Fingers crossed, guys. Let's see if there's something to close with today. <laughs> oh, they're showing, I'm going back to the start of this video when they were around the table looking at their plans of the, all the smart cities and things they're trying to implement and all these leaders are around there. And, and I just keep hearing those words. What are we going to do with the naughty children? What are we going to do with the naughty children? Which is all of us. Because they know that we're spreading information. We're letting people know what's going on. We're planting seeds. Um, and we're useless to government. I've always said it. We're useless to government because we don't give them what they want. Um, we've worked out that if we take off and we're not under their nose and in, on their radar anymore. They can't get to us. We've already figured that out. We can still get on and live our best life and go and do the things that we want. And we're not even hiding, but it's a mindset. It's because, well, we're not gonna comply. So what are you gonna do with us? So this is what I'm getting around this <laughs> table of global leaders. They're really going, what are we gonna do with the naughty children? Like, <clears throat> because everything they've done in the past hasn't worked. Um, all, all, all that happened when they tried to vilify us and ostracize us and, and separate us from society, 
It doesn't matter what your experience has been, whether it's that you're unjabbed, whether it's your vaccine injured, whether it's you've been mandated, lost your jobs, um, whether your business went down. Um, <clears throat> they tried to really push us out of society, but they didn't realise that <laughs> what they were doing actually worked in our favour because it caused us to find each other, it caused us to come together, and it caused us to um, like strengthen ourselves again and ignite like our souls and make ourselves stronger moving forward. And it's all, I always say that in that, in that isolation that we went through, we actually found our freedom again. And we really did. We found our freedom again. And now we're living a fairly free life. Most of you here, I know, um, I can tell by the comments and the things you write to me down below. We're feeling probably the freest we have in a very, very long time. Maybe even like pre-pandemic, years before that even. I feel like we've let a lot of our burdens go. Um, we're just, we're, look, if anything, we're laughing and laughing is a great medicine. Someone said that here to me the other week. Laughter is such a great medicine and it is. And we laugh at the silly things that guides give us. Sometimes they sound so ridiculous, but you know, even the music, like the music can be uplifting, it can be funny. Some of the songs we get here take us back to the 80s for some of us oldies. I know you're not all old <laughs> on here, but this is what I'm getting. It, it, it actually helped us to become stronger. And see, these global leaders now realize that um, our movement of people waking up has grown and so they're going to have to look at addressing it so now they're thinking what are they going to do with the naughty children <laughs> it's actually nice to be put in that category isn't it like I said yesterday in the classroom we closed our books ages ago folded our arms and we're just waiting for the bell to go so we could just walk out the classroom door well that's us um so now they're going to have to look at how they're going to address <laughs> us naughty children <laughs> oh, I think it's pretty funny actually because they've got a bit of a conundrum on their hands <laughs> because they know they can't silence us anymore um, they're not able to sew our mouths up mm, 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 so we can't talk because we'll find another way see we're too creative and too clever we'd just type it in or we'd write things down or we'd make a sign or we'd we just we just have this creative ability as well to look for other avenues. Um, so that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm seeing today. These people are trying to work out what to do with us. <laughs> that's pretty funny, isn't it? We're the, you know what we are to them? We're the too hard basket. It's like they don't want to deal with us, but they kind of know they have to deal with us. But how do they deal with us? See, see we've been a challenge for them all the way through because <laughs> we've annoyed the absolute but Jesus out of them. And and I think we could all agree that when you think about, if you think back to like Macron, what was it? Macron said he was going to, um, what was he going to do? Take down all the unjab people. Um, he was going to stick it to them or something like that. And then we've got Trudeau who, who was um, just telling everyone it was a fringe minority group and you know, we we bring up this real anger in these global lead, <laughs> sorry, global leaders because we don't comply and do as we're told, and so they're struggling to know how to deal with the naughty children. And the problem is, <laughs> when you've got naughty children, which we apparently are, well, we're not really, but this is how they view us. Um, <clears throat> it 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 corrupts other children, is what they're kind of saying. So then other children, um become naughty children as well it's like how that happens at school um you, you just you don't want you want your children to behave and to be perfect in the classroom and this is what they want from the, the people who are now waking up they still want them to be compliers and they're not because they've had enough and like i keep saying we're the mirror reflection to them that they were told lies bullshit garbage right from the get-go and they know that now and we're all getting on with the show and they're, a lot of them are still stuck in the narrative, but trying to work out how to get out. Oh, it's funny, yes. So we are a bit of a conundrum to these leaders. <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? Um, let's see if there's something to close with today. Yeah, I'm getting it. People aren't giving in to government because their ideas, oh, as we know, are absolutely ludicrous and ridiculous. And see... This is what I keep saying to you. People are not in the mass psychosis for all of this. They're not. So people who work in those industries know what's going on. Oh, 
doctors, things like that. They know they were silenced by all these mobs. And, and everything was hidden, swept under the carpet, hidden under the tablecloth. So there's a lot of people out there that know that all this has been going on, keeping the truth from people. You can't tell me the people working in the media don't know. Oh my gosh. Imagine the burden those people are carrying around who are giving mainstream media information, knowing that they've been lying to people for three years and they have to continue to do that. Well, what are they going to do? Come out and tell people they were lying? Because then they'll be just... Oh my God, they'll be marched through the streets. Could you imagine it when people wake up to the fact that media has absolutely been lying them, lying to them? Look what happened with CNN. As soon as people got wind of that, they all turned and left and CNN pretty much went down the gurgler. Because oh, people aren't stupid. Once they realise they've been lied to, although it's certainly been a long time, hasn't it? Three years. Oh my God. Hang on, let's see if there's something else today. <laughs> we always have to get a song here. Oh, I'm getting this song. We won't be beaten. We won't be beaten. And obviously it's for us. Um, and I think it's by Angry Anderson. I can't remember what his name was. It's a, I'm pretty sure it's an Aussie band. Is it We Can't Be Beaten? Anyway, you guys will know it down below. Share it if you think of it, anyone, so we all know. Um, but it means we can't be beaten. <laughs> because, because we're not following all their rubbish. Oh, we just see it as a laugh. Look, if nothing else, we are laughing at it, aren't we? We do. Oh, God. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Angry Anderson's band. Was it Rose Tattoo or something like that? Or maybe it was... Ro Were they Rose Tattoo? Mm. You know me. I'm a bit hopeless. So let's go and look at that song, We Won't Be Beaten, and check out the words because um, it might have some significant meaning for us today <laughs> because we won't be beaten. Um, <laughs> I just... I do laugh. I'm getting this picture of them all sitting around standing rather around this big table with their big map and worrying about what they're going to do with the naughty children and how they're going to deal with this because we keep we keep just like pestering them we're like those kids you know those kids that just keep talking and talking and we keep pestering them they're trying to get us to go away but we keep talking it's great keep sharing all your stuff guys because that's what that's what we need to do plant your little seeds all right i'm going to leave you with that song today we can't be beaten i think that's what it's called and i'll say goodbye from australia it's saturday morning here i'm off to do some housework actually oh that'd be fun and i'll say goodbye from australia don't forget to hit the like button subscribe and i'll talk to you soon bye from australia bye everyone